I'm now in my garage and I wanted to quick show the two different tools I'm going to use to monitor this heater's performance. This over here is a carbon monoxide meter. It reads the concentration of PPM of carbon monoxide to determine when it's dangerous and uh, we're going to be monitoring that. I've done videos in this uh, in the past, I'm not going to explain that at this point. Over here we have a carbon dioxide meter. That is also important for air quality safety. Uh, I rarely see people using a meter like this to measure appliances like this. And uh, really this keeps track of how much fuel is burnt and your oxygen concentration and your carbon dioxide concentration. Again, I'm not going to explain this too much. Out here in uh, where I live, it's about 400 ppm naturally. You can see here that we're at about 660 ppm. The more I talk near it, the more that it will go up because I emit carbon dioxide. Uh, but uh, in any case, this is my garage. I had a kerosene heater running in here earlier today, so it's uh, a little bit elevated. My garage, uh, just to show you, is a uh, 22 by 24 foot, I believe, garage. The uh, garage door seals relatively well. I've done tests on air changes per hour in this particular garage before, and um, I get uh, a few air changes per day, but that's about it. So it's pretty well sealed. We're going to assume that this room is uh, pretty well a sealed container and see how these numbers work. Most interestingly, I am curious on how much carbon monoxide this thing releases to know how safe it is. They say that you should only use it outdoors and uh, I'm really curious how much it smells and how much carbon monoxide it releases. Over here it has that big dent I was talking about. Um, I got a good discount because of that so I really don't mind that that dent's there. It's kind of like sticking money in my pocket. I don't really care. In any case, let's fuel this thing up and uh, fire it up and see how it runs. They say it needs fuel. I don't, I don't know what fuel is. I mean, Red Bull is fuel. Gasoline is fuel. Kerosene is fuel. So I'm just going to use what I hear of. I hear gasoline. I'm going to fill this with gasoline. Mmm, glug, 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 glug. I'm using the old non-carb compliant gasoline because it pours better. And I like it when it pours. I don't care about the environment. Just fill this whole thing up with gasoline. Mmm, gasoline. It's a multi-fuel heater. It should burn gasoline. They say not to use it, but I'm smarter than them. So I'm going to use what I have, and that's gasoline. Now, normally I'm a real stickler on using the proper container for the proper fuels, but all of my kerosene containers were filled with, well, kerosene, and I wanted to use diesel fuel on this. So I just took my gas container, dumped it into a car, and uh, then aired it out for a few days to make sure that there were no remaining fumes in it, and then filled it with an ordinary diesel fuel blend from a standard fuel pump. Because that's what I really want to burn in this thing, and I want to know how clean it burns. So there's about a gallon and a half of diesel in here. This time of year in my climate, it's about a 50-50 mix of number one and number two diesel, I believe. But uh, it's in the tank here, and the fuel gauge says, uh, empty. Doesn't even register. Apparently they don't want you to run out of fuel. Um, I'm assuming that gauge works. Let's tip the unit a little bit here. And there we go. The gauge floats up, and it floats down, so it does work. It uh, just tells you you're about empty when you have a gallon, gallon and a half left. Not a big deal. But uh, let's turn this thing on and see what it does on diesel fuel, which is not what they recommend. And I do not hear ignition. I am going to power cycle this one more time because it does have a high pressure fuel pump in it and it may take a little bit for that fuel pump to prime. Cold air, nothing. Let me power cycle this one more time. This isn't a good start, is it? Oh, there it goes. You hear the igniter now. Ooh, there we go. That's warm air. 
actually has fire shooting out of it. And it doesn't smell good. Well, it's running on diesel fuel. Let's uh, give it some time to warm up and see what happens. Nice warm air though. If I was in a shop and didn't really care about a little bit of smell, this would be great. It is about uh, minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit outside right now. So a little bit of heat in the garage doesn't really hurt me at all right now. In fact, as I stand here in ordinary household clothes, it feels pretty nice. It's just about freezing in my garage otherwise. I don't really smell uh, diesel fuel, oddly enough. What I smell are manufacturing oils. We're going to let those burn off and then see how much actual diesel smell this thing makes. But so far it's working uh, pretty darn well. I don't know how loud it sounds on camera. That's nice warm air, I like that. I don't know how loud it sounds on camera. Usually things on camera sound especially loud. But you can have a, a conversation just a few feet from this without uh, raising your voice. And you wouldn't have any trouble at all. This is a very quiet heater. A lot of the forced air uh, propane and kerosene heaters that you find are a lot noisier than this, so uh, I'm pleasantly surprised at the noise level. We're going to let this run for a little while and let it stabilize and then take a closer look at how it's doing. But for right now, it seems to be working pretty well. If I stand over here out of the heat path, I feel a good amount of radiant heat coming out of it already. If I stand in the warm air path, that is a lot of nice warm air. 70,000 BTU as it should be. I had a 35,000 BTU electric heater, forced air heater before this, and uh, that worked pretty well, but this is much nicer. Anyway, we'll let this run for a little while, and then I'll get back to you. While the heater is running over here, I want to mention one thing that I forgot. It does have a heat shield that you're supposed to install. It comes in this plastic bag. And I think you install this on the bottom so it doesn't uh, radiantly burn the surface that it's on. If you install it on some sort of flammable surface, like a piece of plywood covered in sawdust or something, uh, I'm using it on a concrete floor, I don't care, so I'm not going to install this. It's kind of pointless to me. But I also have an infrared thermometer. Now, I could put a piece of material in front of this to measure the, out the outcoming air, but I realized that uh, it is spec for 1,000 degrees. So I could measure the outgoing air with this and another piece of material, except that at 1,000 degrees, most materials burn. This does not work on an unpainted surface, and paint burns believe that. And this only goes up to 1,000 degrees. So let's just monitor the temperature of the outlet. If I hold this on here, point it at the outlet, it goes to high. Yeah, it can't register above 1,000 Fahrenheit. So uh, the air coming out is very, very warm. I'm standing about five feet away right now and it, uh, it's extremely warm, so it does seem reasonable. Let's take a look now at the two meters that I have running in my garage. Now it's only been about three minutes since I fired it up. My carbon monoxide meter is still reading zero, and this does respond extremely quick quickly to carbon monoxide. I've tested this with gasoline engines running in my garage and other sorts of no-nos that people probably shouldn't do, but uh, that I did to test it. And my carbon dioxide meter started around 600, and now it's already at 2500 ppm and rising. And really, once this reaches about uh, 20,000 ppm, this only goes up to 10,000, then it becomes dangerous. And if it goes up to this level in three minutes, you can be sure that it would become dangerous if you ran this for too long. However, I have one more meter that's probably of more interest to most people. <clears throat> And that is this meter, a thermometer thermometer. It measures uh, temperature and it started at around 40 degrees. It's already comfortably warm in here after just three minutes of running. I'm pretty impressed. I'm sure that this is lagging quite a bit, but uh, in any case, it's at least 50 in here right now. I'm gonna continue running this heater for a while and see what it does to the carbon monoxide levels. <clears throat> One thing I want to note at this stage is that air coming out is very nice and warm. It gives off a good amount of radiant heat, and there's basically no smell. None at all. I'm pretty darn impressed with that. They did stink a little bit like uh, machining oils when it first fired up, as you'd expect any new appliance to, but at this point, it doesn't really smell like anything. 
it's as clean as a wick type heater and it's burning diesel fuel. Uh, not number one diesel, but ordinary pump diesel. So I'm pretty impressed with it. I can let this run for a while and just see how warm my garage can get. I have an insulated garage and an insulated garage door, but at negative 10 outside, cold creeps its way in pretty quickly. This is all full of frost. The ground down here is freezing cold, but it is already uncomfortably warm in my garage. This thing's only been running for about uh, five minutes now, which is impressive. I never expected it to work that well. As I said, I have a 35,000 BTU electric heater that I run in here, and it is nowhere near this fast to keep the garage up. Not anywhere close. I started out with the garage just a little bit above freezing, uh, somewhere around 40 degrees. And this thermometer is very laggy, as all thermometers are. So I'm going to use a different method to measure the instantaneous air temp in my garage. Over here I have my tripod that I've been using. It's positioned uh, just somewhere not in the path of the heater, which happens to be behind it blowing the other direction. But now I can now use my infrared thermometer to measure the temperature of this paper. And that will give me an accurate instantaneous temperature of the actual air temp in my garage. Which, surprisingly, is only uh, 57 degrees. Um, it uh, feels a lot warmer than that here right now, but maybe just because I've been standing in front of the heater. I can let this keep running for quite a while and just see what it does to the carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide levels in the garage. I want to make sure that I can safely use this on diesel fuel. Now, I am running this on standard pump diesel right now, not uh, kerosene. Not K1 or K2 kerosene, but standard pump diesel. It may not be the cleanest fuel, but I don't really smell anything at all, which is pretty surprising. I'm not sure if after, uh, you know, 20 hours of use on this type of fuel, I'd have to disassemble it and clean it or not. That's definitely a possibility, but it is looking like I'm going to try to just run this on ordinary diesel fuel. It's a lot cheaper, a lot more available. I have to drive 60 miles to get K1 where I live, so fuel fuels available at every uh, corner gas station around here. Another quick look at my meters before I go inside to cool off a little bit. 5,000 ppm there, still zero on carbon monoxide, which uh, is the most interesting reading. And I know that this thing does work and that it works extremely well, so uh, when it goes above 150 then I have to start worrying. Uh, people with asthma and other breathing problems have to worry below that, but uh, for most people around 150 is where you got to start worrying. I know OSHA has their regulations and whatnot, and people can nitpick on that all they want, but uh, in any case, we're just going to see if this thing rises above zero. This particular meter displays zero until it gets to 30 ppm, just for the record. Well, this heater's been running for about 15 minutes now in my garage, and it's getting uh, very uncomfortably warm in here. I'm not exactly sure why. Perhaps this paper is too close to the ground, but it's still saying around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. It feels more like it's about 80 degrees Fahrenheit in here, and uh, that's not too bad considering that it's minus 10 Fahrenheit outside. Once again, the smell from this thing is very minimal. Um, I hardly smell anything except that light machine oil smell that I smelled initially. There's just a little bit more smell than you get from a wick type heater, but it really isn't that bad. And most interestingly, to me at least, is a carbon dioxide meter is pegged at 10,000. It's been like that for a long time. That means 1% carbon dioxide. 400 is the standard atmospheric concentration. It's now well above 10,000. Not uh, a huge concern, but uh, you wouldn't want to do this sort of thing inside where you uh, breathe the air for 24 hours straight. Um, here's my carbon dioxide meter, or a carbon monoxide meter. It's still at zero, which I'm pretty impressed with. It does start rising long ago. So I'm going to keep this running for quite a while yet and just see if I get this meter to do anything but show zero. This is what happens if you run a wick type heater on diesel fuel instead of kerosene. It gums up, carbonizes, and fails. This only ran through about a quarter gallon of diesel fuel before it uh, gummed up and I had to replace it. I did this as an experiment. A lot of people say that you can add additives to your diesel and run them in a wick heater. I say BS. It doesn't really work. A heater like this over here has a high pressure fuel pump that atomizes the fuel. And in that case, it really shouldn't matter a whole lot. So for this heater over here, I intend to just use diesel fuel with a diesel fuel stabilizer additive package. And 
it should work quite well on this heater. Hopefully it doesn't gum up over time. If anybody has experience with the uh, torpedo style heater running standard diesel fuel, go ahead and put that in the comments. But for now, after at least 15 minutes, it seems to be working exceptionally well. And I really don't see why there would be a problem with dumping up. I mean, diesel fuel is intended to be used with a high pressure fuel pump that atomizes the fuel for combustion purposes, which is exactly what this does. It uh, just may add a little bit of extra uh, smoke and tar and such into the combustion product. It should just be blown out the front and dissipated. One thing I will not be doing in the future is putting diesel into a gasoline container. Yeah, I know that's pretty stupid, but I just did it uh, for one day because I didn't want to buy a, an additional container if it turned out that diesel uh, smoked or didn't work well in this particular heater. So at this point I'm going to go out and buy an actual diesel fuel uh, container instead of gasoline for this. Alright, I think I'm going to wrap up the video here because, because it is just way too hot in the garage to be able to stand it right now. It's got to be almost 85 to 90 degrees by now. I'm in here sweating and I have to go inside just to cool off. And uh, this is the Sunstream 70,000 D2 heater. It is advertised as a mix of uh, convection and radiant heat. Now there is a little bit of radiant heat, but in reality it is primarily a standard convection heater. But it does have a wider diameter and a shorter length. It's nice and compact. It uh, burns very cleanly, as I've proven with those heaters, which still stand at uh, zero for carbon monoxide, even in this small environment. That warmed up from 40 Fahrenheit to probably 85 Fahrenheit by now. So it burns extremely cleanly, hardly any smell at all, even running on standard diesel fuel. And it's actually quite quiet. I'm not sure if uh, you think it's noisy on video, I haven't edited this yet to find out, but it's actually pretty quiet. So this is the uh, ProTemp Sunstream. I'm going to shut it off now and see what the cooldown cycle looks like. Flame shut off, the internal fan shut off, and we just have the external fan at this point. They claim it takes about seven minutes for the cool down cycle. The air coming out right now is every bit as warm as it was, but uh, I'm not going to show the whole cool down cycle because it's just going to be like this, blowing out warm air for the next seven minutes before it shuts down. In any case, this is Neuralnar, and uh, I would highly recommend this heater. I haven't used it for a long time, so I don't know what the reliability is, but it has gotten pretty good reviews overall, and I give it another positive review. I really like its performance, its construction quality. I've used uh, kerosene heaters before, the WEC type ones, both Radiant and the Tower style. I've also used torpedo style uh, kerosene diesel heaters before. And this is the best one of any style that I've used for heating a garage or shop. So the price is quite reasonable, and I would recommend it. It's a nice heater. Thanks for watching.